Hello guys, how are you? This is the build of the 172nd F-35A Lightning II uh, fighter bomber, stealth fighter bomber. Um, this is a commissioned build. Uh, the same friend that actually commissioned the F-14, the Iranian F-14, uh, liked it so much that asked me to do uh, another one. Well, I reluctantly said, okay, I'll do it again for you. Uh, either way, he gave me uh, an SU-35 from Zvezda, which is uh, appreciated, much appreciated. Um, this is an MCP kit, multicolored part. Uh, it has a lot of detail, a lot of detail. Um, the fit the, it is very good. Uh, it is very good indeed. And it was a very, very interesting build where I could test my airbrush skills and my hand painting uh, skills also. Always remove the excess styrene. Uh, on this case, I am using a sharp side cutter, so it is a bit easier. But even so, I like to scrape it a bit with the hobby knife and then to sand it a bit just to make sure that the fit is perfect. Otherwise, you will have gaps. So remember, guys, always remove the excess styrene from your pieces. Here I'm drilling the holes on the wing to do the pylons, weapon pylons. I want this bird to be fully armed, even if uh, in reality the bird carries uh, his payload on his inner bomb bay, which by the way I had a blast detailing it a bit. It is a very detailed bomb bay. However, I detailed it just a little bit with some fiber optic cable. As you can see I am using a fiber optic cable which is very flexible so for that you will need some super glue as you already noticed and uh, guessed. Uh, for this for this, I will use some uh, rocket hot uh, super glue and a kicker um, like this one here. Um, I use deluxe materials I'm not being paid for this I just love their materials they're awesome. Uh, this kicker is fantastic. As soon as you spray it on the super glue, it dries stone immediately. So 
It is very good indeed and it helps to fit the cable in his place. Using a hobby knife I scraped the side detail simulating the wires and I placed more cable. Uh, what better thing to simulate the, the wires than real cable, right? Bay and landing gear uh, bay also fits like a Lego. Uh, it's like kind of Gundam uh, kit. Um, it's just snap fit. However, I just used some glue on the contact points in order to make it more firm. But the kit fits like a glove. It is fantastic. And now let's work on the cockpit. Uh, the only thing I added was some uh, foil wedge seat belts that I have here. Uh, I had here extra for modern uh, US fighter, so um, it fitted like a glove. That was the only thing that cockpit needed. It is extremely detailed and very well built. I'm just dry fitting here, uh, both houses, the fuselage, it helps a lot if you do this. This way you can see some mistakes, some things that you have to correct. It is very uh, useful. Now let's paint the interior of the bomb bay and uh, the interior part of the landing gear doors and bomb bay doors. 
in white, matte white from Tamiya. Here I forgot to uh, film and to show you one thing. First, before I gave it a white coat of XF2 matte white, I primed it on with black. This way you get more shadows. When you have a lot of detail like this and you detailed it a bit more, the way you have to enhance shadows is to do a black um, primed primer uh, coat and then use the white. That with an enamel black wash that I'm going to apply in the future will help a lot to enhance and to pop up those details. Here I am giving a light dry brush, okay, with light gray. Um, I just wanted to say this cockpit, despite being very small, it's only 172nd scale, as you know, it is amazingly detailed. It was a pleasure to work on it. It has a lot of detail and it looks cool, looks well, looks the way a stealth fighter office should look. It is very, very good. I don't like to advertise, but if you want to build jets, if you like to build jets and stealth jets like this, I don't know the F-22, but this F-35 is a must. It is not an expensive kit from Academy, and it is very, very, very good.
And now we're starting to apply the glue. In this case, I use Revell Contact Glue. I just love Revell Contact Glue. What I'm doing is I'm not using the whole contact surface because when you apply the glue, you have to squeeze both parts. And when you squeeze both parts, the glue tends to ooze out. So the more glue that oozes out, the more you have to clean. So I only use half surface of the contact surface. And if the glue goes in on the inside, no problem at all. Problem is if it goes on the outside more than it should, right? And if I use a little less than I should on the contact surface, well, a little liquid cement just solves the problem. So I never use the whole contact surface. The less glue it oozes out, the less you have to clean. And now we wait for the glue to act and to bond both parts and uh, let's see what happens. Very patiently I removed the clamps and uh, masking tape that held both halves and um, yes it went well. Uh, the kid didn't even need it, any kind of putty at all which is uh, remarkable for a 172nd uh, academy kid not wanting to uh, criticize but not even an inch a small piece of putty was needed. Very, very good fit indeed. Here I am cleaning the kit with uh, industrial alcohol and um, later I cleaned it again with a bit of water and uh, some uh, washing detergent. Clear parts are very good, as you can see, very transparent, no seam line in the middle, which is a plus. Um, I actually enjoy making my own masks. Yes, not always uh, the most professional work, but hey, professional, it's not what I am. I have a life out there, so. I make my own masks and enjoy it very much. I use a pencil to draw the limits and then a new exacto blade and it helps a lot when painting the kit and you have already the canopy frame protected by Tamiya masking tape.
to paint the base color of the F-35. Uh, I used, as you can see here, dark gray. With a bit of black, I added after, added after a bit of black and a bit of silver to give it that metal shine, okay? And uh, mix it all with thinner, with a bit of airbrush, airbrush flow improver to a milky consistency and airbrushed it on the kit. Now, would you believe if I told you that I am airbrushing Vallejo Paints Game Color Range on this kit without even priming it? That's what's happening. The detail is very good but very thin. So when I prime something and the primer is a bit thick and it's going to, uh, you know, erase a bit that detail so that's why I cleaned thoroughly the kit. I cleaned it so, so much that now the paint just grabs into the plastic without even needing some primer. Please don't be fooled by thinking that now I'm painting the underside of the plane that I turned immediately after painting the top side. Of course, first I let it dry and then I painted the underside uh, of the plane, obviously. Remember that I told you that I added a bit of silver to give it that metallic sheen? Well. I'm trying to take advantage of that and polishing the particles and the pigments of metal color. Um, and I found out that the dark gray, the dark sea gray, um, turns a bit different. And yes, takes a bit of a shine, of a metal shine, which is very interesting. So I kept polishing it with a napkin and uh, got this uh, interesting effect. On this kit you have to use two techniques. Uh, masking for the flat surfaces, the ailerons, and, uh, the slats, but you also have to hand paint, brush paint, the interior details of the anti-radar uh, surfaces. So here I am masking the, the plane surfaces to use the airbrush, but later I will hand brush some details. Again, I'm using this paint with a bit of silver to give it that metal shine and here I'm trying to take advantage of that by polishing it a bit.
you can see here, I am using a mix of airbrush technique for the straight lines and then making it better for the hexagons and triangles with hand brushing. Okay, this is a very complicated bird to paint. And now I know why my friend um, commissioned this to me. If he is hearing, thank you very much. However, yes, it was fun to do this. It is fun to do this. But I have to use both techniques, both the airbrush and hand brushing. If I had used primer back there, I would be in serious trouble right now because I wouldn't be able to see where to paint. And like this, because the paint layer, paint coat is so thin, I can see and paint and do some hand painting uh, very clearly.
now let's protect all this paintwork. Um, I have here X22 from Tamiya. Uh, I already have uh, pre-mixed uh, X22 on a 50-50 ratio, being 50% X22 and 50% lacquer thinner. So let's do this, let's apply a clear coat. After giving a black wash to all Bombay doors and gear bay doors, I just have to wait for the wash to dry to clean it up with a little bit of um, enamel thinner or white spirit.
This is uh, an old uh, bottle of XF56 metallic grey. So I filled it with lacquer thinner and some Mr. Color labeling thinner. Mix it all up, and that that it. This is why I am removing the paint from the bottle, but not in its original state. Okay, so don't be fooled by that, please. So, is it a tail sitter? Mm -hmm. And... Nope. <laughs> Next, I needed a filter just to tone down the difference between the light gray and the dark gray. Um, I usually apply the filter, but I am not very safe and very comfortable with it. So I applied a wash of black oil, uh, Aptilum IABT110 black, and uh, it turned out very well. this um, I had a final let's call it challenge which was to uh, mask and paint the frame of a clear part where um, the camera and sensors are housed in the in the bomber in the F-35 and place the canopy which has a very uncommon way to uh, be opened um, and after this, it's done. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like this one. Um, keep modeling, okay? Always, always with a smile. And um, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.